Hi everyone. You can think of this video as sort of a bonus video to the Lagrange multiplier section. Uh, the idea here is we're going to take our time machine back to Calculus 1 and we're going to look at the max-min problem of Calculus 1 that we learned how to solve. So we looked at the problem of let's find the maximum and minimum values of a function of a single variable. If we recast this problem into Calculus 3 language, this is really saying we want to find the maximum and minimum value of this function of two variables whose value is just the y value of the point that you're plugging in. So that's, that's now the question of height. Right? This, this p is just pulling off the height of the point. So we want to find the point of maximum height. That is, we want to find the maximum or, or minimum value. The maximum or minimum value of p. But we only want to do that for points that live on the graph, y equals f of x. So that's our constraint, y equals f of x, or y minus f of x is 0. And if we write it this way, then that can be our constraint function, y minus f of x. And so we want to find the max min of p subject to the constraint. How do we do that? Method of Lagrange multiplier says work out the gradient of your function work out the gradient of your constraint. Where are these parallel? Well, both have y component 1, so they're going to be parallel when their x components match up, and that means I need f prime of x to be 0. So the candidates for max and min are where the derivative is 0, and that's precisely the technique we used in Calculus 1. It was known as Fermat's theorem. The maximum and minimum values occur where the places or at the, occur at the places where the derivative is zero. So we've just recast an old problem into the new terminology of calculus three, and we see that ultimately it ends up giving us the same method of solution, find where the derivative is zero. But we can carry this a little bit further. We can look at the corresponding picture. This was the picture we had in calc one that said, you know, you're interested in the max mins, look for the places where there's a horizontal tangent. Let's see why this is the case when we look at it in terms of Lagrange multipliers. So here's our constraint curve. What is our function? Our function is p of x, y is equal to y. The method of Lagrange multiplier says, look at the level curves of this function. So we'll look at the level curves. That's where p is equal to a constant, or in other words, where y is equal to k. So these are horizontal lines. So our level curves are horizontal lines. The method of Lagrange multiplier says, look where look at the point where your constraint curve is tangent to your level curves. Our level curves are horizontal lines, so they look like this all the way up and down across the page here. And we're interested in the places where the constraint curve is tangent to our level curve. And that's going to be that point and that point. Those are the places where the constraint curve has a horizontal tangent. So that's, again, looking at an old problem, taking our time machine back, going to Calculus 1, looking at this problem of finding maximums there, and realizing that our techniques for solving maximum problems in multivariable calculus, we can apply those same techniques back to functions of a single variable. And they produce the same solution in the sense that whichever way you look at it, it's a question of finding the derivative equal to zero. So as you go through your math courses, as you learn more techniques solving problems in higher dimensions, it's always a good idea to take a look back and say, hmm, what does this tell me about techniques I learned before in solving the problems in lower dimensions? And this is a part of the learning process, seeing how these new tools you're learning are just generalizations of the older tools that you learned in specific cases. Alright, thanks for watching.